You know, Jordan, I really thought on a cold ass rainy day like this, we'd have a lot more puddles, but I think this is the biggest we're going to find today. So no, I'm not going to shoot it. And I guess we'll just talk about this camera instead. Welcome back to BRB TV viewers. It is Chris Nichols here. We got another preview video just so like we did for the Fujifilm X-H2, but we now have a pre-production Fujifilm X-T5. Now, although it is a pre-production camera and a preview, we can't do a lot of testing. There is still a lot to talk about this more photographic centric camera. Let's get to it. So lately, Fujifilm's been designing its cameras like the X-S10, the X-H2S, the X-H2 with more of that DSLR style dial control, which I personally like a lot. But I think fans of the classic X-T design will be very happy to see those return to the X-T5. We've got those manual control dials. Actually, they've made the exposure compensation dial a little bit larger. That's nice, easy to change when you want to. We've got that classic shutter speed dial, ISO dial. That's all a very welcome return. But there's some other really nice features here. We have the two command dials front and back, but unlike the X-H2 series, these can also be customized with push in button functions. Just enhances at your fingertips how you can quickly set up the camera the way you like. Now we also have a lot of familiar controls here that you'll recognize from before. We've got that autofocus selector switch down here. It's always easy and nice to change. We do have an autofocus joystick on the back. I've always liked that. The grip actually is a little bit larger than what we had on the X-T4 it feels like. Just raises a little bit higher up, gives you a little bit more to hold on to with your fingers and it seems very comfortable to me. Same battery that you find on the X-H2, X-H2S and X-T4. So that's all going to be very familiar. There's no contacts on the bottom plate. So it doesn't look like we're going to have a multi-function grip that goes on here with electrical connection. Now, one thing I will say that I am finding annoying, it's the only thing that's really bugged me so far on this design. When I'm changing my ISO on the dial here, I am finding it quite easy to by accident also change my drive selection. I don't really feel like the X-T4 did that. Here, the X-T5, I find that I'm constantly going to HDR mode, but that's about it. Otherwise, this camera handles beautifully and like you remember it. So one of the really big upgrades here on the X-T5 is Fujifilm moving its 40 megapixel sensor that we've seen in the X-H2 over to the X-T platform. And this is quite a substantial increase in megapixels in detail over their older 26 megapixel sensors. We love this for photography. I mean, you get lots of detail. Videographers might not love it so much because the sensor does read out slowly. Rolling shutter can be an issue. Or if your photographer relies on electronic shutter, you might see some strange diagonals as well if you're panning the camera. But for the most part, it's going to be a non-issue issue, you're going to love the extra detail. And you might be wondering, okay, are my lenses going to support these 40 megapixel sensors? Okay, so the fact is Fujifilm has released a list of which lenses will take maximum advantage of this new sensor. But Fujifilm make great lenses, lots of sharp zooms and very good primes. And the fact of the matter is, even if you're using lenses that aren't on the list, you're still going to get big improvements in detail over a 26 megapixel sensor. So don't feel too bad. It's still going to be excellent for you. So the Fujifilm X-H2 has a CF Express card slot to go along with an SD card slot. And that faster card is going to open up a lot of video capabilities the X-H2 is taking advantage of, as well as increase how long you can shoot before the card slows down. The Fujifilm X-T5 has a setup more similar to the X-T4, twin SD card slots, which is fine. It just means that, you know, we might have some video features that are locked off because of that as well. We're going to find that we won't be able to shoot as far in sequence most likely because that SD card slot is the bottleneck. Okay, so let's talk next about displays on the X-T5, 3.69 million dot EVF. Oh, but there's good news for a lot of you out there. See, the X-T4, that had a fully articulating LCD screen panel. That upset a lot of people. The X-H2, the X-H2S, the X-S10, fully articulating LCD panels. Now, I prefer that, but I can accept begrudgingly that there are going to be people in the world that have a slightly different opinion of mine, and although they're wrong, I can respect that they're allowed to have their opinion. So, you now have the return of their three-way tilt LCD. I think a lot of people are going to love this, especially Richard Butler. This is by far his most favorite update beyond whatever else they've upgraded on the camera. And I know a lot of you guys are gonna love it too. You're just all wrong. I have no idea the artist's intention of this statue, but I'm gonna assume it's a giant letter U celebrating the use of the letter U in words like color or armor, a testament to our country's British roots. Uh, for you American viewers, I know this is very confusing. Is this statue a big 
you to the fact that there's no use of that in your language? I doubt it, but I, anyway, let me get after Where was I? What was I going to talk about next? Oh, right, yes, I was going to talk about color with the U, and anyway, okay. So the X-T5 has all of Fujifilm's latest film simulation mode, including its very popular nostalgic neg, something we have not seen on an X-T platform before. And of course you have all the other fan favorites, Monochrome, Acros, the Eterna, so this is full featured when it comes to Fujifilm simulation modes. Now I know because this is brand new, nostalgic neg on an X-T platform, you want lots of samples for the sample gallery, but I've been trying to shoot nostalgic neg in this light and it just looks like I mean, it's meant to accentuate yellows and oranges. Everything today is blue and gray. So I hope you like Acros. So with the X-T5 having the same 40 megapixel sensor as the X-H2 and also having the exact same phase detection hybrid autofocus setup and the same autofocusing algorithms, performance should be identical. Now we do get all those subject detection features that we played with in the X-H2, the animal, the bird, the planes, trains, automobiles, motorbikes, I mean it's fantastic. It is a full featured setup. I do still wish that face detection, human detection was in the same menu. And how does that autofocusing system perform? Well, again, it's pre-production, we can't test it yet but we will be able to soon and when we do the best way to make sure you don't miss that is to click that subscribe button if you haven't already click the notification bell before you forget and that way when our full review comes out you won't miss it we have a small but important upgrade over the Fujifilm X-T4. Now Fujifilm has put its seven stop IBIS system in here, improved over the six and a half stop that we found before. And that in-body image stabilization being improved is very important because now that we have a 40 megapixel sensor, we wanna make the most of that detail and get rid of as much motion blur as possible. So Jordan, the viewers have gotta be sick of all this gray light. Let's do your video talk next, which is something different. Like you don't care if it's in the field or in your office, just anything different light wise than what we have here. All right, everyone, it's Jordan Drake here in much better light, as promised, to talk about the video capabilities of the Fujifilm X-T5. And we can't do a lot of testing with this camera right now because it is still pre-production, but the most important thing to understand is what you're giving up compared to the higher-end X-H2, which is much more of a hybrid video-focused option. Now, the ones that really stand out to me is we have the ability to record 6.2K and it does record 4K oversampled. The drawback is we have a substantial crop when we use those modes and there is no 8K recording option. Now, I think that's because this is a recording to dual SD cards. There's no CF Express Type B like we have in the X-H2. And that also restricts us in terms of the recording modes. This does H.265, H.264, but does not offer ProRes recording, probably because of that memory card bottleneck. There's also some sacrifices in terms of ports on the X-T5. Most noticeably, we don't have a headphone jack on this, though it does include a USB-C to headphone adapter, so you still can monitor your audio, it's just a bit less convenient. But also they've sacrificed the full-size HDMI port for a micro HDMI port, which will inevitably break, you'll find out. Uh, this will allow you to capture ProRes RAW video, but unfortunately I don't have the firmware for my Atomos Ninja 5 in order to test that yet. Also, if you need long record times, just remember that the X-T5 is not compatible with the optional fan accessory that you can use with the X-H2. X-H2S, I am concerned about how long this will be able to record, and again, that's something I'm looking forward to testing once I've got a production camera. I think if you're looking to record high resolution video, the X-H2 is absolutely worth the premium cost there. But if you're looking for a lower cost option, I would actually lean towards the X-T4. That camera gets you a fully articulating screen, it has less rolling shutter, and you're getting oversampled 4K on it without a crop. I really think you should look at the X-T5 as a photographer's camera with some video functionality, but it's certainly not a powerful hybrid tool like some of the other Fujifilm bodies. So who should buy this camera? Well, I mean, honestly, the audience is pretty clear for this. This camera's primarily aimed at photographers, you know, but also it's aimed at Fujifilm users or people who are getting into the system that love that classic Fujifilm way of using a camera. This feels handling-wise like an updated Fujifilm X-T3. You get back that three-way LCD. You get all the dials, the sexy look to the camera, that more vintage aspect. You also get a camera that's lighter weight, has some of their best autofocusing potential, and has that new high megapixel sensor. 
So if you like that more classic Fujifilm way of handling a camera, you want something lightweight, and you don't mind the fact that the video feature has been pared down, this could be a fantastic camera for you. You do save a little bit money compared to the Fujifilm X-H2 as well, but do remember that is a more full featured camera if you're looking for that hybrid photo video shooter. Let us know what you think in the comments below about the brand new Fujifilm X-T5. Do check out the sample gallery on dpreview.com. You can see the JPEGs there, but I tried my best to get to those nostalgic examples, and uh, you can see that link in the description below. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for joining us. From Jordan and I, we'll see you soon for another episode of Deep Review TV.